Good, how are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Okay, I'd like to welcome all of you to our webinar today. Um, I just want to go over a few housekeeping things with you. Uh, PACAC is a nonprofit association comprised of more than 1,200 school counselors, college admissions counselors, independent education consultants, and other professionals responsible for guiding students through the important transition from high school to post-secondary options. Thank you for joining us. You can use your Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to check out the full schedule at PACAC.org. This presentation is also being recorded and will be available within about a week at that same website, PACAC.org. I'd like to now turn it over to our presenters. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Bob Atkins. I'm the Dean of Admission at Washington and Jefferson College. I am really pleased to be joined by two outstanding colleagues, Brad Tokar from Westminster and Heather Kabbalah from St. Vincent. Um, we're here to talk to you a little bit more about uh, obviously, our, obviously our three schools, but also uh, to tell you a little bit more about the advantages to going to a small school in Western Pennsylvania. So we're really happy to have you folks here. And so without any kind of further ado, we're just gonna jump right in, okay? Um, I'll be honest with you, I have the easiest part of the whole presentation. I'm sorry, Brad and Heather, you guys get the difficult pieces. Um, I get to talk about Pittsburgh, which is a place that obviously I love and that we all love because we've chosen to stay in this part of the country um, for our professional careers. But um, Pittsburgh, if you're not from this area, is a wonderful city. It, it, we are three colleges that are located almost in a triangle around Pittsburgh. You've got Westminster that's north of the city. You have w &J, that's southwest of the city and St. Vincent College, which is east of the city. So if you drew sort of lines between all three of our schools, we'd be a triangle that enclosed Pittsburgh. And that means we really have access to all of, of the advantages that a city like Pittsburgh has to offer without the distractions of being in a major city like Pittsburgh. So let's talk a little bit more about the city. Oh, sorry. That's who we are. Um, that's our names. And we'll, of course, have this for you, available for you at the end of the presentation as well. But please, if you have a specific question about one of our institutions, you can address it in the Q&A, as uh, our announcer said a little bit earlier on. So. Again, we're welcome. We're happy to talk to you folks about w &J, Westminster, and St. Vincent today. Um, we're going to focus on why you should be at one of our institutions. So, greetings from Pittsburgh. What a great city. Um, if you're from this city, you probably know just some, many of the things that go on there, but this just gives you some of the highlights of, of what Pittsburgh has to offer and why we're such a major, major national city. First of all, um, if you don't know, we've been voted the most livable city twice in the last 15 years. So, People really enjoy coming to Pittsburgh and, and, and visiting our city. And in fact, it's become the number one travel destination for Gen Z, which is of course your generation. There are lots of things to do within our city. We keep folks busy year round uh, from the spring, summer, winter, and fall. There are always something that's going on here. Um, 15 plus festivals, actually my daughter's favorite festival in Pittsburgh, she goes every single year, is the Pickle Festival. Who knew Pittsburgh had a Pickle Festival? But it's her favorite event. She actually comes back every single year to go to that particular event. Um, I haven't gone myself, but if you love pickles, it's something you have to try out for yourself. But lot, just like that, though, there are tons of other things to do. It's a major concert venue. You're going to see lots of concerts there. It's become one of the top food destinations in the country. I mean, Pittsburgh's food is unparalleled. I travel a great deal, and I always yearn to get back to, to try some of the many restaurants in the city that I've yet to try, and I encourage you to do that as well. One of the things that's really nice about where we're all located is that every one of us is within one hour of Pittsburgh. So not only can you take advantage of all the social opportunities available in the city, you can also take advantage of all the business opportunities. What do I mean by that? Well, Pittsburgh is home to seven Fortune 500 companies and they're listed right there. Some you probably have not heard of, many you have. Um, we're also a tech hub. And in fact, many descriptions of Pittsburgh include, include the words um, small tech center. And that's who we are. We have 20 plus companies that are growing here. If you drive around the city at any time of the year, you may see cars that, that are being tested as uh, driverless vehicles. Pittsburgh is one of the toughest places to drive. If you haven't been in the city, you'll understand why I say that when you get into the city. Uh, lots of one-way streets, lots of bridges. We have more bridges in Venice. So lots of, lots of challenges if you're going to be a professional, if you're going to be a driver. And Pittsburgh's really piloted in many ways the uh, driverless te technology that's being used by many major companies today. In addition, I just found this out and we listed it today, as you can see, we're the number one city in the U.S. for opportunities in healthcare. 
That's because Pittsburgh is really a healthcare hub. Um, everything from Children's Hospital to Mercy Hospital. We have two nationally ranked in the top 50 hospitals in the country. So again, it's a great opportunity for you as a student if you're interested in healthcare or in the business world to get that first internship that will launch you onto a career that will, we hope, bring you back to stay in Pittsburgh for forever, or at least for a very long time. Um, in addition to all the city, all the companies that are located right in the city, because of our location in Western Pennsylvania and Pittsburgh, within an eight hour ride of, of Pittsburgh, you will find 110 million American citizens. That's one third of all of America that lives within an eight hour ride of Pittsburgh. That includes three of the top major cities in the US, New York, Philadelphia, and Chicago are three of the top six most popular cities in the country. So in terms of getting those internships outside of, of, of Pittsburgh in the area, we have access to over 110 million uh, people. And obviously the, the, the largest number, largest concentration of Fortune 500 companies in the world are within eight hours of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So again, we as individual colleges utilize that, and my, my colleagues will talk a little bit more about that later on in this presentation, but we utilize our, 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 where we're located uh, to our students' advantages. So if you want to have an internship that's off campus, you'll have that ability. You want to have an internship right in the local area in Pittsburgh, obviously with seven Fortune 500 companies, that's going to be readily available for you as well. We encourage all of our students, I think, to get into the city when, when they're comfortable doing that. I know, again, I use my daughter as an example. Uh, she was raised right here in Washington, Pennsylvania, spent all of her formulative years here. She didn't really feel comfortable going into the city until she was a junior, and that was fine. We didn't want to push her to do that, but then after her senior year, she did an internship with uh, the, the DA right in Pittsburgh and loved it, and now is convinced that she wants to live in the city the rest of her life. I'm okay with that, and I think that you'll be okay with those same sort of decisions. So um, take advantage of the fact that you have access to so many things within our area that you can take advantage of. Outside of just the business world, Pittsburgh has great extracurricular opportunities, as you can see. Um, we have four major sports teams, four professional sports teams, all there, and I'm including the Pittsburgh Riverhounds there, um, which I think is one of the most undersold opportunities in, in, uh, in Western Pennsylvania. You can always get a ticket, and it's a great event, it's a great venue, and the, and the team plays really hard. In addition, outside of sports, you've got arts, museums, and, and, the, and the great outdoors to take advantage of as well. Because of our different locations uh, surrounding the area, we all have ready access to all the things that you can see right here on this page. Uh, and my favorite activities, and I'm not a snow guy, but getting out and, and, uh, and, and snowboarding is something I'm learning how to do for my youngest son. He's a lot better at it than I am, but the fact that I can get there and do it within 30 minutes is something that, that we take advantage of because it's right there. Um, my daughter and my older son are really big into exploration. So we spent a lot of time when they were growing up in the, in the museums, in the zoo, and at the aquarium. Um, they were great outdoor fans, and so we, we did a lot of things outdoors. So again, all these things that you, that you might want to do as a college student when you have free time, you have access to, to within an hour ride of, of your campus if you choose one of our schools. So we would highly encourage you to do that. Come visit us and on the way, stop in Pittsburgh, explore the city, and then come out and, and visit all three of our campuses whenever you get the opportunity. So with that, I'm gonna hand it over, I think, to my colleague. Thanks, Bob. My name is Heather Kabala. I'm the Dean of Admission at St. Vincent College in Latrobe, Pennsylvania. And as Bob mentioned, we're all very close to the city of Pittsburgh. We're about 45 minutes to an hour outside of Pittsburgh, depending on traffic and depending on the tunnel. Um, if you come and visit Pittsburgh or you're from Pittsburgh, you know what I'm talking about with tunnel traffic. Um, so that can influence the distance from, uh, the time, time distance from the city to St. Vincent. And we're located at the foothills of the Laurel Highlands um, in the mountains. And as Bob was saying, lots of opportunities for outdoor exploration, outdoor adventure activities here in the St. Vincent area in Latrobe, um, as well as the other two areas where um, my colleagues are from at Westminster and WMJ. So I wanna talk a little bit, as Bob mentioned in, in his introduction to the presentation, we wanna talk a little bit about the advantages of attending a small institution here in Western Pennsylvania. And there are lots of, of opportunities and advantages of attending a smaller institution. Uh, I'm a product of a small liberal arts institution in, in and around the city of Pittsburgh. Uh, I absolutely love and advocate for that experience. I think um, the small campus experience is really special 
and offer students something that maybe you don't get at a bigger institution. So one of the things that I want to touch on is academic customization. It's something that you don't always get at a larger institution, but is something that at our schools and schools similar to our size is kind of common, commonplace. Uh, we pride ourselves at small institutions on being able to uh, get to know students in, on a very personal level and understand your personal academic and professional goals and then help you to meet those and hopefully exceed them um, as part of your experience, both on the academic side and um, socially, professionally, personally. Um, one of the things that we have to our advantage at a small institution is flexibility. We, as I said, get to know you as a person. And so our staff and faculties at our, our various institutions will know you, know your goals, and know what you're looking for. That enables them to work with you individually to craft a schedule of courses, craft um, other types of opportunities, whether it be experiential learning, which we'll talk about in a little bit, um, internship experiences, and other types of um, hands-on experiences that you would be able to get at a small institution. The personal relationships that you forge with faculty and staff at a small institution are key to your success. And I see that as one of the big benefits of coming to a small liberal arts uh, or small institution in general, that you do get to know your faculty members and they can point you in the direction of internship opportunities or research opportunities. They may even invite you to work on a research project with them. If they know that you have an interest in a particular area in which they might be working or they have a colleague that may be working on something that is of interest to you. The other, um, one of the other nice things about being at an, a small institution is that most of us have professional academic advisors as well as faculty advisors. And here at St. Vincent, we offer both. And I think um, my other two colleagues have both at their institutions as well. So we assign academic advisors to students who come in as freshmen. And here at St. Vincent, you may actually have two academic advisors. You may have one of those professional advisors and you may have a faculty advisor. And that's pretty common at small institutions. So you not only have the guidance of a, a staff member, you also have the guidance and direction given by those faculty advisors. So those are people that will meet with you usually a couple of times a semester to check in, make sure everything's going okay with you personally, with you academically, and also help you in crafting a schedule that makes sense for your academic and personal goals. And so they help to make sure that you're taking the right classes at the right times, that you're not taking a course you don't need or taking a course that you, you already took two years ago and maybe you didn't remember. Um, just keeping you on track so that we can make sure students are graduating with the proper coursework and on time. That's something that I think is really important um, at a small institution. It's important to our mission that we are ensuring that our students are graduating in a timely manner, that we're not keeping you here. As much as we love you and wish you could stay with us forever, we, our goal is to educate you and send you out into the world, just kind of like your parents. Um, but we wanna make sure that you're graduating on time and those academic advisors will help do that. Majors, minors, certificates, all kinds of specialized programs. I think those are important factors to consider when you're looking at colleges. Does that school have the program that you're looking for? And also going a step beyond that. And I think this is something at a small institution that you'll be able to take advantage of. Maybe the small institution doesn't have a major called the same thing that you have in your mind as something that you're interested in. But at a small institution, and that going back to that flexibility, we have the ability to craft something that's specific to you. So you may be interested in engineering and writing. 
I'm thinking of an example of one of our recent grads here at St. Vincent. She was able to do a double major in engineering and English and went on to an MFA program in writing at one of the most reputable uh, MFA programs in the country. But she's also an engineer. So mel melting those interests together and coming up with something really unique happens at all of our institutions, um, both at Westminster and W&J, and, and also as my example given from St. Vincent. Those are things that you don't always get to take advantage of at a bigger institution. So some of the other advantages, some of the other things that small schools can offer to you as a student are those leadership experiences and service opportunities. When you are a little fish in a giant pond, maybe at a school of 40,000 students, it can become a little overwhelming. It can become a little daunting to kind of step out of your comfort zone and maybe explore some things in your social life, your personal interests that you wouldn't normally do. At a small institution, those things become much more real and, and possible for students because there's a much, uh, a very supportive environment where we encourage students to, to think outside the box a little bit, step outside that comfort zone, because we know that we're providing a supportive environment where it's okay if you falter a little bit, there will be somebody there to help, help pick you up and, and move on. Um, and also a supportive environment to really help you blossom. And hopefully that's, that's what happens. Um, I know in my experience that that happened to me at that small liberal arts institution in Pittsburgh. Um, so being a big fish in a small pond is, is basically what I'm trying to say. So at a small institution, you have all those opportunities available to you much more readily. And um, it, it can be a little bit more comfortable to take advantage of some of those things that you might be thinking of now as something you wanna pursue in college. We also offer a lot of specialized leadership programs and all of our institutions, um, Westminster, WNJ, St. Vincent, we all offer a lot of student leadership opportunities. We want to train leaders in their field and the community. It's part of our mission as a small institution. And so we want our students to take advantage of leadership opportunities, um, whether that be student government, serving in an officer position of a student club or organization, uh, or special leadership programs or training programs. Um, for instance, an example from St. Vincent might be our Benedictine Leadership Studies program. That's a mission-driven program. There are other examples at Westminster and WNJ where students can get involved and actually learn the theory and practice of leadership. Those become huge factors in building your resume and setting you apart from students who are graduating and applying for those jobs at the same time you are. So we encourage you to become a student leader if you're not already. <clears throat> Community service and service learning opportunities are also something that are abundant at small institutions and again, just readily available for you to access. We encourage students to get involved in the community as all of us are in our small communities around Pittsburgh, our institutions are community partners and community leaders. And we expect and hope that our students will, be, will do the same and follow in those footsteps. So lots of service opportunities, volunteerism is a big part of life at a small institution. And service learning as well. Um, if you want to take advantage of things like AmeriCorps or the Peace Corps, things like that, a lot of our students at our institutions are, are doing those things either during their careers with us or just after their careers at our colleges. One of the other wonderful benefits of a small institution are our career and professional development opportunities. And at all three of our institutions, we have staff and faculty and centers 
directed around this particular service. Career services is very important to us. And I know that we all, um, as small institutions in Western Pennsylvania, we are all doing a really good job of providing great outcomes for our students. All, all of our students who graduate from our institutions are, are getting jobs, getting those internships, getting admit, excuse me, admission into reputable masters and professional level programs. And so all of the things that I mentioned contribute to those resumes and those applications for jobs and continued study beyond your bachelor's degree. Some of the things that you will experience or be able to take advantage of in the career centers at our campuses would be experiential learning opportunities. I mentioned that a little bit um, previously and Bob spoke to it uh, quite nicely in his intro about Pittsburgh. There are wonderful opportunities for both experiential learning and internships where you can get hands on real experience in the area in which you're studying. And um, many, many companies around Pittsburgh in our small communities where we're all located and also in the city love to have our students come and do internships. And in many cases, those internships lead to full-time employment. So those are things that are really important to building your resume and achieving those professional goals after college. A little bit along the lines of what I spoke to on the academic advising side would be the folks in the career and professional development centers who are career consultants or career advisors. They all may be called something a little bit different at each of our institutions but they have the same purpose and the same job. And that is to help our students build their resume, write cover letters, learn how to interview, um, and also help in finding those placements, help in finding internships and full-time employment after graduation. In many cases at small institutions, those are lifetime services. So you wanna make sure that when you're looking at schools, that's an important factor. Can you go back to your career center five or 10 years later when you're thinking about a career change and say, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm ready for something different. Can you help me retool my resume? Can you help me start looking for other types of opportunities that I might be interested in? And the guidance and connection that those people can help you find along the way. One of the things that all three of our institutions pride ourselves on are our alumni. And our alumni at all three of our schools are tremendous advocates for our institution and also for fellow graduates. I know that at St. Vincent, our alumni are some of our biggest um, employers. If they're working in a particular company or maybe they own their own business, those folks, that network of alumni become extremely important to current students in finding internships and employment. And so, and I know that's probably true at Westminster and WNJ as well. So getting to know our alumni, whether they be people that just graduated four years ahead of you or 40 years ahead of you, so those, those connections can be really important. And that's another piece that the Career and Professional Development Centers can help you can help you put together. And I think I'm turning it over to Brad. Thank you very much, Heather and Bob. Excellent points. Um, appreciate all of the information. I think that all three of us are products of small private liberal arts colleges and uh, have all enjoyed our experience and why we have chosen the profession we have where we have. Uh, no question about that. But I wanted to talk about some of the uh, sort of expand on the information that both Heather and Bob shared with you and also talk about a few different things. Um, one thing I did want to highlight was opportunities outside of the classroom, in particular athletic participation. And I know that some of the members of this panel have appreciated that as well at small private liberal arts colleges. Um, I know that athletics are a big deal here at Westminster, and I also know they are at St. Vincent and WNJ because I have been on both of their campuses uh, to enjoy athletic participation. And we are in the same conference, and 
truly enjoy that. Uh, it, it's a wonderful opportunity. But when you take into account that virtually half of the total enrollment here at Westminster, and I'm going to estimate similar at WNJ and St. Vincent, are involved in varsity athletics. And that's just at the varsity level. We also have 22, um, or I'm sorry, 14 intramural sports and club sports. So athletics are a very big part of the campus life here at Westminster, and I would say at most small private schools like WNJ and St. Vincent as well. Uh, the nice thing about it too, if you are involved in a varsity sport, uh, you can still participate in intramurals in the off season. So you can really stay active throughout the year if that's something you choose to do. Another thing I would mention that is I think unique at small private schools. Uh, many people are two sport athletes, possibly a track athlete that also plays football or basketball and so forth. Uh, you have an opportunity to participate in two sports at a small private college. I know here at Westminster, approximately 20% of our student athletes are involved in another athletic sport. So again, that's an advantage that I don't think you oftentimes would have uh, at a larger university. So I think taking advantage of all of those extracurricular opportunities uh, certainly set small private schools apart. One other thing I would mention, a wonderful experience. Again, I know I enjoyed this myself as an undergrad, the travel experiences. Um, I know our, our teams during spring break all travel south, softball, baseball, track and field. It's a wonderful opportunity for team building, camaraderie, uh, and experiences and competing around the country. I know our teams that have advanced to the national playoffs have, have flown across the country to participate in those activities. Uh, we've had students in track and field that participated in the national events. So it's, it's a wonderful opportunity uh, to represent your institution really around the country. So um, anybody interested in athletic participation, really, I would encourage you to look at Westminster, St. Vincent, or WNJ. I think you would find they have wonderful opportunities available for you there. And just to kind of build also on top of what Heather and Bob shared about the academic support and close relationships that are available to you. Uh, and I would say that that extends outside of the classroom. You have faculty, but you also have coaches. And I know personally, uh, one of my football coaches was directly or indirectly responsible for any job I've had after I graduated from college. So that networking and those opportunities are, are wonderful. Um, when you look at schools that are small and private schools like the three of ours, I think you find an enrollment that is typically less than 2,000 students. Um, and student to teacher ratios. I know here at Westminster, we're 11 to one. And I would guess that both St. Vincent and W&J, they're gonna be close to that or certainly less than 15 to one. Our average class size is about 17 students in a class. So if you get the image as a prospective student, what your classroom is gonna be like, okay? How closely you're gonna work with your professor. They're gonna know you on a first name basis, okay? I always share that I don't know of a professor who doesn't pass out their personal contact information to all of their classes here, cell phone number, home phone number, office number. They reach out to students, they encourage students to reach out to them. So it is a very close working relationship. Again, I'm sure very similar at St. Vincent and w &J with those types of relationships. And that leads to positive results. Um, when you look at graduation rates, okay, at small private schools versus the national average, uh, for a student who starts college nationally at any institution, 33% of them will graduate in four years. 53% will graduate in four years from a small private school. So that, that's a, a sharp increase. Uh, I would say that overall, approximately 58% students graduate from college when they start. 65% at a small private school will graduate. And I know at Westminster, we pride ourselves in saying that over 70% of our students graduate. And I would say that it's very similar at St. Vincent and W&J as well. So I think those close working relationships that Heather mentioned that you have with faculty, the networking opportunities that Bob mentioned, certainly that you have in Pittsburgh, uh, I think all three of us are very proud of our institutions and what we are able to offer our students. No question about that. 
And that's basically, I think, what I wanted to cover. Um, so I don't know if we have any questions or uh, I can turn it back over to Bob or Heather uh, to see if there's anything they wanted to add. Go ahead, Bob. I was, I was just, <laughs> thank you, Heather. I appreciate that. I'm the oldest person in the group, so I probably should. You know, I have limited time. So um, I, I just I, let me just start by saying that we're very similar institutions. Um, I think that one of the reasons I would encourage you to visit all three of our schools is because the personality is going to be a little different on all three of our, on all three of our campuses. Um, we share a lot of things in common. We share a lot of values in common. At the same time, you know, because of our location uh, and because of the natures of the school, we're going to be a little different. And so for you to decide which of the three campuses you feel most comfortable on um, or if you feel uncomfortable comfortable on all three, and they may make a decision based upon other factors. But I would certainly encourage you all to visit us uh, at any opportunity. We would all welcome you on campus at any time. I think I speak for my colleague, colleagues when I say that we view that the college visit as an important part of the selection process. Absolutely, Bob, I'll second. I'll second that. I'm sure Brad will probably third. Yeah. <laughs> third, our, our motion to encourage visits. Um, it is so important for you to actually step foot on our campuses. And I know that can be a little challenging right now in our COVID driven world, but uh, I believe that all of us, am I right gentlemen, that we are all offering some sort of in-person uh, visit, even right. in light of the COVID situation. We are all taking lots of precautions following our campus health and safety plans and any recommendations that are you know, coming down from the state level uh, Department of Health and things like that. We are all um, doing a good job of keeping our students safe and um, have very little um, uh, risk on our campuses and welcome you to come um, even during the pandemic. We would love to have you. And again, when you're here, we're keeping everyone safe, as safe as possible. So there may be some limitations. There may be um, some work that we need to do with you to find a date, but, um, and also limiting the number of people. But we hope that you do find your way to all three of our campuses. Encourage you to maybe come spend a few days or a weekend in Western Pennsylvania and see what we all have to offer. And there's lots of uh, outdoor kind of things to do in the fall here in Western Pennsylvania and Laurel Highlands area is where we're all located. So I um, encourage you to come and see us. Yeah, I, I would just echo what both, both of my colleagues said. And one of the things I always tell uh, prospective students that the most important thing you can do through this whole process is visit campuses. Um, and the, both Heather and Bob and I have tried to articulate advantages to small private schools. I would say to you, there are many. There are also advantages to larger universities. Uh, and that's why you need to visit. You find the right fit for you. Um, and that, that's really the best way to go about it. I realize we live in a virtual world and we're in a virtual situation right now, but don't let that replace uh, you visiting a campus. That is what will really help you to make a good decision. I'm also going to ask Brad and Heather to answer one last question before we sort of let you guys go for the day. And that is just if you had one piece of advice to offer all these students out here, other than uh, visiting the college, what would it be to help them with, with their college search process? And Heather, I'm going to call on you first. Oh, wow. It's uh, difficult to come up with just one but um, maybe I'll slide a second one in there. My advice would be to stay focused. Don't let all of the stuff that's happening right now um, in all of our lives get you off track with your college search. Keep plugging away. Um, as we were talking about, come and visit, send in your applications, don't get behind the eight ball in regard to the timing of the college search process. It's already mid-October. Um, I don't want to stress anyone out. We all have enough stress in our lives right now, but um, don't lose sight of that because this isn't going to last forever and you've got to still plan for your future. 
and just a quick thing, a quick second thing, be your own advocate in the college admission and college search process. I think all three of us would agree that it is impressive and sometimes surprising when we hear directly from our prospective students instead of from mom and dad. We love talking to your parents, but we really want to talk to you as a student and we want to get to know you. So that's why I say be an advocate for yourself. Um, don't don't rely on mom and dad to make all the phone calls or send all the emails. Get involved in the process and um, immerse yourself in it and really get to know what it's all about and get to know what the schools are all about that you're looking at. That's it. All right. Uh, I guess if I had to say one thing very quickly, I would say apply early. Uh, has other Heather kind of mentioned, you know, we're in mid-October. The sooner you apply to institutions you are interested in, the sooner you will hear back and also know about financial assistance. The later you wait, the later you will have all of the information you need to make an informed decision. So I would say um, certainly as we all three articulated, visiting is very important, uh, but I would say apply early. And then if I could just add one thing, I would say ask questions. Uh, you know, we work with students and families, and sometimes people will say, I'm sorry to bother you. I don't want to bother you. And my response to them is, that's why I have a job. So please reach out. Please ask questions. That's why we're here. Thank you both. I could say that Brad and Heather both stole all my thunder, and they really did. They touched upon all the things that I would have highlighted. Uh, the only other thing I might mention is don't let costs scare you off. Um, you know, we are, all of us are, are, none of us are inexpensive. I mean, no college is not inexpensive, period. Um, but I think that, you know, we all have means to help you fund your education. We all believe in investing in our students as they come to our institutions. So don't let costs scare you off. And the second piece of that would be, of course, to file the FFSA as soon as you possibly can. Um, we're now, you know, as, as Heather mentioned in the mid-October, uh, the FFSA opened up October 1st. Um, hopefully your 2019 taxes are done. And if they are, then you are ready to apply for financial aid. So please go ahead and complete the FFSA as quickly as you possibly can. That allows us as institutions the opportunity to get you uh, a complete aid offer as quickly as we can. Um, and that, that way you have an understanding of and can plan out you know, how to help fund your, your college education. So um, Heather, Brad, I wanna thank you both for, for joining with me today and, and presenting uh, our three great institutions here in Western Pennsylvania. Um, to the audience, I'd like to say thank you for joining us as well. We, we appreciate the opportunity to spend some time with you, and we appreciate the fact that you are willing to learn and, and listen to a little bit more about uh, our three institutions. So uh, again, we would encourage you to visit us, call us with any questions you have, and let us know how we can assist you through this process. Thank you very much. Thanks, Bob. Thanks, Heather. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. There we go. Thank you all for joining us. You can do a quick survey when you close your window. And then you can also sign up for more sessions at pacact.org slash virtual. And there will be recordings available. Thank you so much to all of you and have a great day.